Okay, so somebody asked me to do a care video on these, so I'm doing it. Um, this has probably um, been the most established or well-known isopod in the hobby um, for many, many years now. Um, this is Trichorina tomentosa, the uh, dwarf white isopod. You can see there's a bunch in here. Um, these have been a staple in uh, the reptile hobby, especially with like dart frogs and stuff um, for bioactive cleaning. Um, they make great food for lots of invertebrates and small amphibians and reptiles. Um, your tiny little micro geckos. Um, like I said, the dart frogs. These will also be good for feeding um, slings and stuff. Um, put the macro lens on real quick so you can kind of see them closer up. So that's them, real tiny. Um, so for these guys, um, their setup is extremely simple. Um, it really doesn't take much to get these to take off. Um, this is a six quart tub. Um, it's got about like an inch, an inch and a half um, of, uh, you can use just about anything you want, but my mix is like one to one to one cocoa fiber worm castings and peat moss, and then a ton of deciduous leaves mixed in, mostly oak. Um, but there's also some maple leaves and alder leaves in here, but mostly oak. Um, specifically, what I have the most of in my area is um, the uh, coastal oak and the valley oak. It's mainly what I use, but you know, you use whatever you have in your area. It really doesn't matter. Um, as far as like supplemental foods go, um, I find, so there's a, there's a few different like trade secrets to culturing these guys in like massive numbers. Um, this is only one of my cultures. This is the six quart culture. I also have a master culture that's like, um, I think it's like 28 quarts or something like that. Um, but I use this little six quart tub for uh, sh reptile shows and stuff just so I can pull out of it and um, sell people their, uh, their cultures. Um, but what I use, there's a sweet potato in here, which, um, Sweet potato is a, a lot of species like it, but it's hit or miss for these guys. Um, but what I find they like the best, which they're munching on in here, is um, um, it's uh, pumpkin. Um, or squash works. Butternut squash is also a favorite. Um, butternut squash is like crack for isopods. Pretty much any species can't resist it. And uh, they eat a lot of it. Um, another trade secret, what a lot of people do for reptile shows is... Um, Say you want to um, sell master cultures or like, um, or starter cultures, sorry, not master cultures. If you want to sell starter cultures, what people will do is um, you buy a whole bunch of like four or eight ounce, or sorry, like eight or 16 ounce deli cups, um, put like a quarter inch to a half inch of substrate in there, and then bury a banana peel in it and add like five or six of these guys. You do that like a month or two before the show, and excuse the plane, I'm gonna wait till the plane passes overhead. Sorry, I live right next to San Jose International Airport and I'm in the way of lots of cars and planes and it's annoying. But anyways, so you set that up, you get your deli cups and your substrate and your banana peels and um, you set those individual cups up and put them in a warm place maybe a month or two before the show. And by the time the show rolls around, you'll have little starter cultures of like, you know, a good amount of isopods for people to take home as feeders. And you'll sell those for $15 or so, you know, and uh, you're in business. But uh, like I said, um, very simple setup, six quarts. I don't have any ventilation on this. Um, some people do, I do not. They do fine without it, like there's a buttload of them in here, you know, and they do great. Um, also, calcium is important, you know, like for every isopod species, you're going to want to add your, uh, your, uh, your cuddle bone or your calcium powder or what have you. Um, that's really important for their long-term um, sustainability, and uh, if you're going to want to culture them in any significant numbers, you're going to need that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you. These are one of the simplest of isopods to, to culture. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, I'm going to do another one of these isopod care videos today, um, and then probably some more next week. I don't want to do them all in succession, just because, like, I don't want to run out of content. I mean, I'm always getting new species and stuff, but, you know, just for the sake of it. 
Um, I'm also planning, I'm going to try and do a whole collection kind of video, um, at least for isopods. I keep lots of other invertebrates too, but I think I'll make it separate. Like, I'm not going to do a whole invertebrate tour because that would take fucking forever. Um, but I will do an entire isopod tour um, coming up here soon. The only problem is my limitation is my camera. Um, I use my phone and my camera does overheat. Like, it's getting pretty warm right now and I'm only like 5 minutes and 30 seconds through. So we're going to figure out something to be able to get um, all of my isopods in there. I have like 30 something species. I don't know if it will be every single one of them, it, but it will be most of them. And uh, hopefully that will be coming out in the near future, maybe in the next month or so. Um, yeah, we'll see. Take it easy guys. Later.